so this fire hose has failed its last testing and as of that it is being thrown away. Now we're going to give it new life and uh, turn into a flag. So you may be wondering, how big do I make the flag based off of the hose? Two inch hand line laying flat measures about three and a half to three quarter inches. I'll say three and a half. So if you take three and a half and multiply that by 13 stripes, that gives you about 45 and a half inches or four feet. And if we use a standard flag ratio of three by five, and we convert that, we get about six foot nine by 46 inches. About seven foot by four foot flag. I've found that a razor blade works best, however, after cutting through the hose about three times, you're gonna have to swap around or replace a blade. I have used a bandsaw for fire hose, and it works pretty good. Um, everything else I've tried doesn't work that well. With the flag design I'm doing, I want to include the couplings in the design. So what I'm gonna do is just take off about four feet off of each coupling, and I'll be able to determine where in the flag I wanna use them. You can simply take them, connect them together, and just include that in the design. Nice clean cut. I like holding it down with an aluminum square. Protects your fingers a little bit, helps keep it steady, gives you a nice square cut. One little trick you can do to clean up these edges, these hoses are synthetic, so all you need is a blowtorch, just so you can uh, Hit them a little bit, clean up the edges, gets rid of the fuzz, keeps it from peeling away. With the couplings attached together, this will give us an eight foot piece and we can trim it up to our desired length when we go to put it together. So now we can move on to our red hose. Just repeat the process. Now that we've done our red and white stripes, we can move on to our blue section. So most fire hose is double jacketed. What that means is there's a woven fabric outer layer, and there's a woven fabric inner layer lined in rubber that actually holds the water. I decided to try this out. So you peel back the corner just enough where you can fit it into a vise. And if you squeeze the edges enough and pull, you're actually able to remove the outer sleeve from the inner sleeve and this inner sleeve really is the heavier part with all the rubber and everything so just by doing that you now have a much lighter piece of hose plus you have all this rubber lined jacket in white that you can do some more stuff with now So this white fire hose actually contains three different layers. We have the fabric, fabric, and actually a separate jacket of rubber here. So when you separate all that, you get two jackets of white, and you actually get this one basically giant rubber band. Might have another idea for that in a later video. So for a fire hose flag, we're going to need a backer and a border. I'm just choosing to use half inch plywood for the backer, and for the border I'm using some five quarter pine. Uh, just to strengthen the whole thing, I'm going to put a little dado or rabbit in the back here. So I can inlay the backer into the pine border. So I think we're going to do about three quarters of an inch extra length on the plywood all around each measurement. So that'll fit nicely into our border and we'll still have enough room in the center for our hose. Now for the length, I know exactly what we need, but when it comes time to stacking up the hoses, I'm not really sure how tall it's gonna come out to with our four foot measurement. So for now, I'm just gonna do the length and I'll trim it to size once we have everything laid out.
So by the looks of our full layout here, it looks like we'll have just enough to make a rabbit on both sides of top and bottom. Left and right we can trim accordingly. So now that we have this, we can get started on the frame. Now usually if you lay all the hose flat, you probably won't be able to see the wood, but now that we're putting the couplings in there, you'll most likely be able to see that white wood. To resolve that, I just made a couple marks where I think you can stop seeing the wood. Here, I'm gonna pass that a little bit, top and bottom, and I'm just gonna go ahead and spray those squares black. Now that my stock is cut to length, after ripping them on the table saw, they'll both be exactly the same measurement, and that'll help me get the uh, frame to be square once it's all assembled. So for cutting this rabbit, I don't have a router bit big enough to cut it, so we're going to use the table saw. So what I've already done here is set the blade height to half an inch, and for our other dimension, we're going to want to come to three quarters of an inch. We have to factor in that we are just going to three quarters of an inch between the blade and the fence. However, the blade is also removing material, so we're going to come in an extra eighth of an inch to account for the blade at five eighths of an inch, and we can go ahead and rip our material. Okay, now that we've ripped our initial groove in our stock, we can now reset the blade to our next height, which is going to be three quarters of an inch. We'll slide our fence over here and set the blade to three quarters. And this time we'll slide our fence over to half an inch. And remember we have to account for blade width, so we'll go to three eighths of an inch. Now we can see we removed our half inch by three quarter space. That'll allow enough room for the plywood to sit in here and enough bearing to shoot a screw into the front. So for the ends of the frame, when we connect these, we're left with the rabbit exposed on the outside. So to remedy this, I actually cut these pieces three quarters of an inch longer on each side. So what I'm gonna do is, is cut this out so it can sit nice and even in there. If it doesn't make sense now, it'll make sense in a second. So now that that chunk is cut out on the bandsaw, we can see we get a nice fit here. So I'm just dry fitting everything with a clamp without glue yet. I'm going to use screws to assemble the frame. I'm going to pre-drill so I don't crack the wood. I can take this clamp off, add glue, and keep working on the rest of the frame. Now that we have our frame assembled and roughly fit to the backer, we can start to screw it off. Now that the main frame is complete, I'm just going to go ahead and knock the sharp corners off of the little block plane. Now, one of the main reasons I didn't worry too much about the fit and finish of all the joints and all the laps in the corners is that I am actually using fire as a finish for this whole thing. It's going in a firehouse. It contains fire hose. Why not burn it for a finish? Now that we're done burning the border, we're just gonna scuff it up, break any loose debris off, and then we'll finish it. For finishing, I'm gonna be using Total Boats Glean 2.0. So we've already begun moving on with cutting everything to length. So snug up, nice and clean, right against there. We're going to continue the process for the rest. So as I'm trimming these hoses, right where the blue and the stripes meet, there are a few gaps, so what I'm going to do is, same thing as before, paint anywhere that there's a gap black, so it'll hide the wood underneath. Now 
Now that the test file turned out nice, I went ahead and made an entire file that'll cut out a whole grid of stars. We'll get those cut out right now. So now that the CNC is doing its thing and it's cutting out the stars, we can go ahead and start gluing the hose down to the plywood. For that I'm going to be using heavy duty liquid nails, construction adhesive. So stars. For a finish, I was either going to go with white paint or burn star. I chose to go with the burn star. I think it goes really, really nice with the border. Plus, I think the white is a little too clean cut for the rest of the sign. So now I'm just laying them all out on the board, taking them and just clear coating them with an aerosol can. Now that the stars are complete, we can start to lay them out. So all I'm using is a framing square and I made myself a story stick. This can be marked out specifically to what you need. And for this instance, I'm using it for the stars. I'm going three inches off the side for the center of the star on the top row. I'm spacing each of the stars six inches apart. You can use the same measurement all the way through, making sure we're even. Same thing for the side. I'm doing two and a half inch spacing from the border and then five inch spacing between each star individually. So same as a fire hose here, I'm gonna be using liquid nails to stick the stars down as I lay them out. Rather than laying them out now and then having to come back, lift it up and then place it back where they need to go, I'll just put a dab of glue on there now. Make sure not too much to squeeze out the sides of the star and I'll place it down accordingly. Okay, so the first section is done. Uh, as you saw probably during the time lapse, I did start using my 23 gauge pin nailer. Uh, I was using half inch nails in here. So a flag is made up of two grids of stars. There is a five by six grid, which is the one I did first. Then there's gonna be an in-between grid, which is four by five, and that makes up 50 stars for 50 states. Okay, now that all the stars are glued down, I'm gonna finish gluing the bottom half of the flag.